Abhay Kumar and the Thief Rohinaya During the time of Lord Mahavir, there was a burglar named Lokar. He lived in a remote cave in the Vaibhagiri hill near the city of Rajgrihi. He was very clever in his profession and never left any traces of his burglary. He and his wife, Rohini, had a son named Rohinaya. As Rohinaya grew up, he learned his father's profession and eventually became an expert burglar. He even surpassed his father in intelligence and smartness. It was almost impossible to recognize him when he was in disguise. If someone pursued him, he could outrun them. He robbed the rich and hid the treasures in the most unexpected and inaccessible places. He extended help to the poor from the wealth that he accumulated. Many of them felt grateful and were pleased with him. Therefore, they were not willing to help government officials track him down. Lokar was now very old and could see that his life was coming to an end. When he was on his deathbed, he called Rohinaya and said that he was very happy with the expertise that he had shown in committing burglary. In order to remain successful, he advised his son never to listen to the sermons of Lord Mahavir because his teachings were not conducive to their profession. Rohinaya promised his father he would abide by his advice. After Lokar died, Rohinaya expanded his burglary so much that it became almost impossible for rich families to ensure the safety of their property when they went out. They were constantly afraid that Rohinaya would go to their home during their absence and take their jewelry and other valuables. Some people went to King Shrenik and requested him to take action to protect them from Rohinaya's burglaries, since police officers had failed to do anything about the matter. The king therefore asked his most intelligent chief minister, Abhay Kumar, to take charge of arresting Rohinaya. Once, while Rohinaya was secretly on his way to Rajgrihi, he had to pass by the side of Lord Mahavir's assembly hall. He remembered his father's advice of never listening to Lord Mahavir's servant. He put his hands over his ears. Unfortunately, at that moment, he stepped on a sharp thorn that went deep into his foot. He had to take his hands off his ears in order to take out the thorn. During this time, he heard the following words. Human life is the best of all lives. It is possible to attain liberation only as a human. Every human being can attain salvation irrespective of caste, creed, or color. By virtuous deeds, one can gain a life in heaven where all sorts of pleasures and happiness exist. When heavenly beings walk, <clears throat> their feet do not touch the ground, their bodies are without shadow, their eyes remain steady, and their garlands do not wither. However, the life of a heavenly being does not lead to ultimate liberation, which provides eternal bliss and happiness. Therefore, even heavenly beings crave a human life. By that time, Rohinaya had removed the thorn from his foot. He then covered his ears again with his hands and proceeded towards the city. In the city, Abhay Kumar had secretly posted trained soldiers in disguise at the gates and at all important locations. He himself remained watchful. When Rohinaya entered the city, a trained soldier recognized him even though he was in the disguise of a farmer. The soldier sent a message to Abhay Kumar that an unidentified person had entered the city. Abhay Kumar became very alert. As Rohinaya passed by, Abhay Kumar glanced at him from a secret place. He recognized the burglar even in disguise and instructed his men to surround it. Since Rohinaya was very smart, he quickly recognized the danger. He ran towards the city wall. Unfortunately for him, there were soldiers near the wall. He was easily apprehended and put in jail. The next day, he was presented in the royal court. As Rohinaya was in disguise, it was hard to identify him as the burglar. Abhay Kumar was sure, but how could the accused be punished without proof of his identity? When the king asked him about his identity, Rohinaya replied that he was a farmer named Durga Chandra who belonged to the Shaligram village. He had come to Rajgrihi to visit the capital and was returning home when the watchman apprehended him. Rohinaya had made arrangements for that assumed identity with the residents of the village. When inquiries were made in that village, the people confirmed what Rohinaya had stated in court. Abhay Kumar had to devise a plan for getting a confession from Rohinaya regarding the burglaries. 
He came to know that Rohinea was fond of drinks. He therefore arranged to serve an excessive, excessive amount of wine to the thief. The excessive wine made him unconscious. While unconscious, Rohinea was cleaned, dressed in extravagantly perfumed royal garments, and adorned with valuable jewelry. He was then placed on a luxurious velvet bed of sandalwood on the top floor of a palatial building. As Rohinea regained his consciousness, he saw himself in heavenly surroundings. There was a breathtaking view all around. The walls, ceiling, and floor were crystalline. Beautiful maidens were waving scented air with diamond-studded fans. Soft, serene music was heard in the background. Fairy-like dancers were dancing in tune with the music, and divine musicians were getting ready for a musical concert. Roinea could not make out where he was. He asked one of the girls where he was and why they were all serving him so well. The girl replied that he was their new king in heaven. He had attained all the divine comforts which now belonged to him. He could live like Indra, the king of heaven, and enjoy life with heavenly damsels. Could this be true for a burger like me, he asked himself. However, he then remembered that he was helpful to the poor and needy, and he was sure that God had been just. Or could this be the plan of Abekumar, he thought again. It was hard for him to decide what the truth really was. He therefore thought it was best to wait and see. After a while, a luxuriously clad person entered with a golden staff and a book in his hand. Is your new lord awake, he asked one of the damsels. The girl replied that their new lord had just woken up and that they were getting ready to celebrate his arrival in heaven by presenting the divine concert. Let me make sure that all the preparations pertaining to his arrival have been completed before you start the concert, and let me also get some information from him that the heavenly realm needs to know. As he was saying this, he came to Rohinea. Opening his book, he asked Rohinea to narrate the deeds from his previous life prior to enjoying the amenities of heaven. Meanwhile, Rohinea was looking around. He remembered what he had heard from Lord Mahavir's servant about heavenly beings when he stepped on the thorn. He observed the movements of heavenly beings in front of him. He noticed that their feet were touching the ground, their bodies had shadows, and their eyes were blinking like human beings. He immediately figured out that this heaven was not real, and it was only an illusion created by Abe Kumar to gain evidence of his burglaries. He therefore replied that in the previous life he gave donations to worthy causes, constructed temples, went on pilgrimages to holy places, and rendered service to deserving people. The person took note of his statement and asked him to narrate any wrong deeds that he might have indulged in. Rohinea said that he had scrupulously avoided misdeeds and therefore he was born in heaven. Abe Kumar's plan did not work, and Rohinea was set free as being the innocent farmer that he pretended to be. Rohinea was released, but he constantly thought about what had happened. He realized that what he had accidentally heard from Lord Mahavir had saved his life. Then how could his father be right in the advice that he had given? Lord Mahavir must be a very great entity. If those words, which were accidentally heard, were so helpful, imagine how helpful his teachings would be, he asked himself. He had wasted his years avoiding the servants of Mahavir. After pondering at length, he had decided to go to Lord Mahavir and serve at his feet. He went to the assembly and humbly requested the Lord to accept him as his disciple. He also requested to become a monk. Mahavir Swami asked him to disclose his real identity and confess all of his past sins to the king before renouncing his worldly life. He then disclosed his real identity to the king, who was present in the assembly, and was ready to accept any punishment. He also requested Abhay Kumar to accept all the treasures he had collected during his burglaries. Since Roine had voluntarily confessed and had willingly returned everything that he had taken, the king decided to pardon him and permitted him to become a monk. Rohinea deeply repented for what he had done in his life. He started observing severe austerities in order to erase the karmas acquired by his misdeeds. In his old age, with 
permission from Lord Mahavir, he adopted Salinkana, avoiding food and staying in meditation until death. After his death, he was born in heaven.